Y'all are voting in the midterms, right? I got my mail-in ballot right here. I'm still registered to vote in Illinois for some reason, and not California. Am I committing voter fraud? Wait, am I a Russian bot? Anyways, this video is sponsored by Simply Safe, but we'll get to you've you've seen the 4D chess meme, right? It's usually applied to our president after he's done something stupid, and some people say, "Oh, he's not actually dumb. He's actually just playing 4D chess while everyone else is playing checkers." I have not been able to find any. 4D chess sets. You can play 4D chess in software, and people have played 4D chess on a series of regular chess boards, but where are the Tesseract chess sets at? We should build our own four-dimensional chess set. Uh, what, what exactly does that mean? I think we're gonna need some help with this. Uh, Diana? This is your house, right? Oh, hey! <laughs> Surprise! See you here at my home. <laughs> Just relaxing. You, this, your, your home looks like a grandma's house. I called up Diana Coward, aka Physics Girl, to give me a hand in playing a game of four-dimensional yeah, chess. Sort of because if there's them. any YouTuber that can do that, it's her. <laughs> the dimension of a space is the number of coordinates it takes to locate a point within that space. So like in regular chess, you can describe the location of any of the pieces with just two coordinates, like castle to e4. Castle to e4! Two coordinates means two dimensions, or 2D. So let's work our way up to 4D. We already know regular chess is 2D, so what would 3D chess look like? If we want to play 3D chess, and we want to have kind of a 4x4 board, 3D chess would be a 4x4x4 four by four by four cube. So it's like four of these four by fours kind of stacked on top of each other. We're also gonna need new moves for our chess pieces in 3D. In case you're not that familiar with chess, this is the rook or castle. In normal chess, the rook can move forwards, it can move backwards, and it can also move left or it can move right, but it can never move diagonally. We'll mark the possible spaces the rook can move to with these red ghost rooks. This is a rook on a 3D chess cube, and it's actually really easy to move in 3D since we just have to add up and down to the rook's possible moves. From this position on the 3D chessboard, all of the rook's possible moves look like this. One more piece to point out though is the bishop. The bishop can move diagonally in 2D chess. When we bring the bishop into 3D, you'd think that it'd be able to move diagonally sort of through the corner of the cube it's inside of, but that doesn't really work out because you'll notice that it has to change three coordinates to do that. It has to go down one, forward one, and right one. Plus, it ends up changing the color square it's on. Bishops always have to stay on the same color square that they start the game on. The bishop's moves actually end up looking like this in 3D. And these are the rest of the piece's moves in 3D. There are links in the description to models in Tinkercad if you want to take a closer look. We're not going to play like this though, because this is kind of awkward, so instead we're going to lay these boards out like this. We are we're kind of flattening out a three-dimensional game represented in 2D. Yeah, you can move like you do in chess, but then you can also move between the dimensions, right? The rook can move up. Mm -hmm. That is a new dimension we're adding. But since these aren't literally stacked on top of each other, we define moving up as going from here to here. Right, right. Or to here to here for moving up and down. Yeah. But then you couldn't move from here to here. Correct. That would be like going from this corner up to this corner and that's... Yeah, it's like it's like frames of a video are are like slices of time, which is another dimension. So like these yeah. are like different frames. Each picture is a two-dimensional photo, but you add a dimension to it by stringing them together. Oh man! <laughs> I can see defeat because I only I've got a king left. That was very hard. That was a very hard game to play. The Are hardest. you down here too? I'm Are down you... here too. I need a nap after that. 3D chess is kind of mind melting, but we're not gonna stop until we've played 4D chess. So we took our chess board and we kind of extruded it into a third dimension up, and we got a chess cube kind of thing. So logically, if we took our chess cube thing and we just extrude it in a fourth dimension, we would get, 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 get.
we just 2D? Excuse me? Something feels weird, Diana Senpai. Let's try that again. We already know we can represent a three-dimensional shape in 2D. Like if I want to draw a cube, I can start off with a square, draw another square around that, and connect the corners. And even though this drawing sucks, you can tell it's supposed to look like a cube being viewed from overhead. This is called a perspective view. The most common way of visualizing a 4D tesseract is also with a perspective view. You get that by taking a cube, putting a cube around that, and then connecting the corners. Note that this is not the tesseract itself, just like how this is not actually a cube. What we're seeing is more like the tesseract's three-dimensional shadow, which you're viewing on a two-dimensional screen. Try not to think about it too much. A 4D chessboard would require four coordinates to describe the location of any of the pieces on it. In our case, we would end up with a 4x4x4x4 four by four by four by four chess tesseract. We can't actually make a four-dimensional chessboard, but we can make a three-dimensional representation of one. If we use the same flattening technique that we use to play a game of 3D chess in 2D and apply it to a four-dimensional chessboard, then we might get... So, uh, I don't even know how to really show this in a it. comprehensible way. We have four laser-cut acrylic chess cubes, and moving a piece from one cube to another represents moving along a fourth-dimensional axis. So we've taken a four-dimensional chess tesseract, if you will, mm -hmm. and we've unfolded it into these four 3D chess cubes. So we've unfolded four dimensions into three dimensions. Yeah, just like how we flattened the previous three-dimensional game to 2D, this 3D game is a representation of 4D chess. Got that? You with us? <laughs> Just like how a rook can move up on a flattened 3D chessboard, a rook can move four-dimensionally across the corresponding spaces of each cube. We'll just call this moving 4D forward and 4D backward, though if you really want to get your brains in a twist, keep in mind that this movement is technically perpendicular to all three of our normal dimensions at the same time. Now here's how the rook, the bishop, the queen, the king, the knight, and the pawn all move on this flattened 4D chessboard. Easy, let's get to it. I mean, let's start playing, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. <sighs> I lost last game, so now I get to be white, and I'm making my first move. Okay. Here, is that right? Yes, yes. Because two spaces, 40 forward in one space up. So in response, there's so many pieces. I'm gonna move my knight, two spaces regular forward, and then one space 4D forward, which is in fact perpendicular to regular <laughs> forward. Mm. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, well, you know what? Yes. This is so confusing. Here. Like, what is even happening? My pawn here, in the very back, because they can move diagonally when they're taking. Oh, man. Uh. Yes, I got one! Checkmate. I don't care. Okay, what? What? Um, I'm just kill that pawn that was within striking distance. Dang it. Ha! Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and kill that queen. No! Queen for a pawn, that's <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I'm getting hustled. You're like, oh no, four dimensions. <laughs> How could anyone perceive a four-dimensional chess? Oh, whoops, I took one of your knights. Oh, your queen's gone. Oh, this is so hard. Can't even imagine how these pieces are moving. Should we reveal the 4D chess board I've been practicing on?
I don't have any, I don't have any <laughs> not pawns left. I'm not in checkmate, but I also don't think I have any way out of this. So, <laughs> Diana, I concede 40 chess. Oh, you concede! <laughs> Thanks, Diana, for kicking my butt in a direction I can't even comprehend. Uh, hey, remember when I... This video is sponsored by Simply Safe, but we'll get to... For real, though, I share my garage with the landlord here, so I don't necessarily know when the garage door is unlocked or even open, and I keep all my tools and stuff in there. So I want to thank Simply Safe for hooking me up with their home security system. Simply Safe is effective, reliable, and is monitored 24-7 by professionals. It's intuitive, easy to use, and there's no contracts or hidden fees. Simply Safe still works even if you lose power or Wi-Fi, and they can watch out for break-ins, fires, floods, even like ice. Basically, if you need security for something, they have a package that includes sensors for it. Installation is easy peasy lemon squeezy. So visit simplysafe.com slash advanced or click the link in the description to check out Simply Safe Home Security today. And of course, thank you for watching. Please vote and make sure you leave an angry politically charged comment below. It is This is amazing, but it's hard. It's so hard. It's so difficult. This is so hard. As I said, this is so hard. This is so hard. Alan, this is hard. I don't know. Have I, have I mentioned this is hard? Maybe you should do a montage of how many times I've said this is hard. <laughs>